The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Once while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered him, Master, we have been working all night long, but have caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish in their nets that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with, there with him were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, son, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. In the name of God, the holy and undivided Trinity, amen. I have to confess that, like Simon Peter, I'm exhausted. I'm tired of fishing out in the deep waters of the COVID pandemic and now the fire recovery. I'm tired of coming home with an empty boat. What I wouldn't give right now for some nice, shallow water fishing instead for some time to splash around on the sandbar, for a clear view of tasty fish tickling my steady feet, for an accustomed routine with a rested and cheerful crew. I know that I am not alone. I heard this week that Many of us at St. Ambrose are also sick and tired of not catching any fish, sick and tired of navigating the deep, deep waters of COVID and the fire, and sick and tired of feeling empty. To leave the metaphors aside for a moment for the sake of clarity, I hear you when you say that you're exasperated with all of the safety rules and regulations that continue at church. I hear you when you say that you feel disconnected from one another, that you miss table fellowship and comforting hugs in this place. I hear you when you worry about our finances, about the rental money lost because of the pandemic. I hear you when you worry that families won't come back here, that we're waiting too long to get back to normal. I hear you and I understand. This long pandemic is deep water. Like a strong wave, it feels overwhelming for our little St. Ambrose boat. The pressure is soul crushing for our lay leaders, for our bishop, and for me. One false move with the boat, and we can all end up spluttering around in the depths. If we are too fearful to be and do church, 
we miss out on life-giving joy together. On the other hand, if we're too careless, we might spread the virus to a loved one among us who is immunocompromised. You know, clergy aren't superhuman either, by the way. Don and I, between us, have three serious pre-existing conditions that could make COVID, even the Omicron variant, quite a health concern. I also have a daughter nearby who is pregnant and a granddaughter who is too young to be vaccinated. They count on me not bringing COVID into their household right now. At the very least, a COVID diagnosis for me could put me out of the office for a number of weeks. It's happened to clergy friends of mine. The staff would have to quarantine too. We'd be back on Zoom only. Talk about being hampered in gathering and in doing ministry. Going forward through deep waves requires care. I was on a small boat one time in heavy seas. The captain had to take a zigzagging path, pushing one way and then the other back and forth, speeding up and slowing down. It was an annoying way to ride. It made me seasick. But if he had crashed straight ahead through the towering waves, we would have all been in trouble. The same goes for our navigation of COVID at St. Ambrose. We have to zigzag between having a life together and protecting and loving our oldest and youngest and sickest neighbors back and forth through the waves. Deep water is also challenging because we can't see down to the bottom. We don't know where the fish are. On his own, Simon Peter was out there all night without catching anything. It wasn't until Jesus told him where to let down his nets that he caught that huge abundance of fish. As we continue to navigate the deep waters of COVID and now the fire recovery, it's going to be very important for us all to rely on Jesus more than our own routines, fears, or set ways of doing things. In deep water, we have no other choice but to listen, to follow Jesus, and discern together. A great example is the way that we let the disaster recovery workers, both from Boulder County and from Southern Baptist Disaster Relief, use our buildings. Now I know that some of you have been wondering, why on earth did Reverend Ann let them use our buildings now when we've been discouraged from renting St. Ambrose space for parties and other money-making ventures. I can't breathe. <laughs> <laughs> Why did Reverend Ann let the relief workers eat together in Barcelona House without masks on when she tells us that we shouldn't eat together in the same space like we used to? Those are good questions questions that I'm always glad to answer. I like to answer your questions. Here's why we said yes to having people in our building. Jesus asks us to be all about loving our neighbor, right? To be fishing for people, to be welcoming the lost, binding the brokenhearted, sharing God's healing grace with the world outside. You're right. It's against all of our COVID best practices to let so many strangers into our building, especially to take off masks and eat together. It's risky. But we're suddenly thrust into responding to a disaster. Disaster response requires a love 
that is out of the ordinary. Suddenly, it was time to stop mending our nets, to follow Jesus, to step out in faith, and to climb back into the boat and head to sea. Loving our neighbor is always our goal. But how to protect our neighbor zigzagged from sacrificing our coffee hour and budget dollars to throwing open our doors in love. Jesus is now calling us out into the deep waters of devastation caused right here by the Marshall Fire. I'm so proud of how we let down our nets at the right time. Let's keep doing it. So perhaps instead of eating pancakes together on Shrove Tuesday, can we cook together and pack up some Mardi Gras food for our neighbors to take home? Perhaps can we really become a community center for fire victims on the longer term? If we keep listening to Jesus, when we pull those nets up again, we're going to have resources and meaning and community and wild and crazy abundance. We're going to even have to join with others in order to pull it all in. I truly hope that the COVID part of this sermon will be outdated very soon. From what I've read, we can be hopeful about eating together soon as a parish, about taking off these darn masks when we want to. The day is coming quickly when young children can be vaccinated. But it won't be long before we will live with endemic rather than pandemic COVID and life will look more normal. But even then, like Simon Peter, if we follow Jesus, we will never be the same again. Note that Simon and his friends were given the most miraculous, belly-filling, justice-rendering catch of their lives out in the deep waters. They received what they wanted and needed and more. But they didn't go sell those fish, did they? They didn't do the regular fisherman thing with their catch. They didn't follow their comfortable routine. They didn't take them home for a great meal for their families. They left the tools of their trade on the beach. They left the valuable catch of fish for others to take. They left their old lives to follow Jesus. If we truly believe today's gospel, we can be sure that our time spent on the deep waters with Jesus will bring us abundance of life, all that we need, and that it will call us away from the familiar into places where we've never been before. Amen.